This is a C64 power supply with a bad 5 volts rail. I'm going to fix it by modifying it with an ordinary USB charger. Hello and welcome to the chicken farm. As I've shown in the previous video, this Commodore PSU has a defective 5 volts DC rail. But since its 9 volts AC rail is still good, all I need to do is replace its 5 volt circuit with that of a USB charger. Let's get to it. First, let's open the case. It's a bit difficult to get in from the sides, so a thin but strong non-sharp object such as this spudger is a must. Using only a screwdriver would damage the plastic excessively. After a bit of fiddling and some force, it's now open. When I say force, I mean this resin here is as hard as a rock. So any plastic part that is sunk in it will have to be removed by force, which almost always means breaking it off. Case in point, these four plastic posts. And the best way to do that is to get a screwdriver in from the front, lay its tip on the side of the post and bang on it, like I did here four times. The internals of the PSU are very basic, let's take a look. Commodore was known for skimping in the construction of their power supplies and we can see that here. Besides a fuse on the mains, there are absolutely no safety measures at all. These are the mains power wires going through the fuse and into the transformer. On the other side of the transformer, one output, that's 9 volts AC, goes directly into the C64. And the other one goes to this board, which then rectifies it and again sends 5 volts DC into the C64. The PCB is right now held in place by this 5 volt regulator, so we'll take a look at it a bit later. While this is open, let's take some measurements. Mains voltage 240 volts AC, looking good. The PSU's AC line almost 11 volts, that's fine. And the other AC line going to the rectifier 11 volts, also good. Before measuring DC, I'll fix this broken trace that I found here. One leg of the capacitor is floating. After resoldering it, let's measure the output. While when idle, it now goes to 2.6, applying a load, no change, still completely dead. Last thing to measure is the 5 volts regulator, the 7805. The input is ok, it is the rectified almost 14 volts DC, but the output is just 2.7, which means this voltage regulator is definitely defective. Let's now remove the circuit board. There's barely anything here, the rectifying diodes, a large smoothing capacitor and a couple of other elements that have mostly to do with the regulator. I'm curious about this capacitor. Looks to be in great shape, ESR is fine, and the capacity should be 4.7 but is even close to 5. German, West German quality. Now let's take care of the USB charger. First I need to get its circuit board out, which means I'll have to saw it open as there are no screws anywhere on it. Now to take the PCB out, it's small enough to fit into the power supply and has all the modern protections needed as we'll see later on. And its USB connector will provide the needed 5 volts DC right from here. I'll now move on to the next phase. First cut the regulator's legs. I could cut these two AC wires as well, but I don't want to, I'll just isolate them with these. This space here is where the new PCB will reside in. Prep the wires. The charger has to be plugged directly into the mains power, so I'll use these two wires to power it. Solder them onto the PCB. I didn't catch this part on camera, but I have a blown fuse right here. This is the original 160 milliamps fuse from the C64 power supply. It blew while testing. As I don't have another one of that value, I'll put in a new 100 milliamps one, because I want to first see if it blows again. But no, it doesn't. After multiple attempts, it's still holding. I know from the chicken farm that fuses that have seen a lot of use can degrade over the years and decades, so this might have been just such a case. Anyhow, I'll put in a new 200 milliamps one just to be on the safe side. Let's continue. Because I don't really want to desolder the board's USB connector, 
I now found out that the whole composition is too tall to fit in the case. So I'll simply reposition the bottom wires. Let's see if it fits now. Okay, looking good. Now to solder and isolate the USB wires. Because I left the other AC wires intact, the cover doesn't fit anymore, so I'll just break off the superfluous plastic part. Now it fits. Finally, I can test it on my homemade testing device as I've shown in the other video. Turn it on. AC was already good. And now, the moment of truth. Fantastic, I'm so proud. Let's test it on a real C64. Well, the voltage could be a smidgen higher, but it's good enough. So I left it running for quite a while doing stuff. The PSU is warm like usual, other than that, no issues encountered. This sticker will be the way to distinguish it from the other plebeian power supplies. Glue the lid back on. So it's now the next day and the power supply is firmly glued shut. However, while I was fiddling with another power supply for one of the future projects, it occurred to me that I could easily have placed a varistor between the neutral and the live wires of the mains power which would have added an extra layer of protection. Especially because I have a bunch of them already laying around the chicken farm. But unfortunately it's too late now, I'm not going to unglue it, so maybe next time. Speaking of protection, what's left to do is to test the power supply safety features, so let's get straight to it. This is a resistive load of around 1 ohm. And if I turn the PSU on, the output peaks at a bit less than 2.4 amps, which multiplied by its voltage amounts to around 10 watts, all in accordance with the rating of the USB charger. And in regards to protection from shorts, this is an M meter in series, which effectively creates a short. We can see that the charger circuit has shut down and is trying to periodically come back online, but will only do so when the short is removed. So it looks like it's working as it's supposed to. Just a couple of final touches and it's all done. Scraping some marks, cleaning, there, all done. All in all, it was a pretty straightforward DIY project and this has now become my second favorite C64 power supply. Thanks for watching, goodbye from the chicken farm and I'll see you in the next one.